Hello and greetings to everyone watching this video presentation. I am Jan Isol Tihavir from CE2H and I will be tackling the first topic under the basic principles in building conveying systems. But before that, the question is, what is a conveying system? According from the definition below, it is a common piece of mechanical handling equipment that moves not only people but materials as well from one location to another. So easy to say that conveyors are especially useful in applications involving the transport of heavy or bulky materials and in fact, I believe that countless and countless of people have been relying on them especially today in technology era. Speaking of era, let's now take a sneak peek on the history of the subject matter. In 1852, a genius named Elisha Otis brought safety elevator in the world, preventing the fall of the elevator cab if and only if the ever cable broke. So it is just as important as the invention of manually operated elevators since it is primarily used for lifting freight in warehouses and even manufacturing plants as early as the 1600s. The aforementioned safety device consisted of a knurled roller located below the elevator platform and a governor device that monitored descending speed. The safety device locked when the elevator descended at a higher than normal speed. It was this safety feature that made the elevator a safe conveying system for building occupants. So this is where elevators came in and became a part of human lives. Elevator is the term describing the conveying device used in moving people or freight vertically. It is usually found in commercial buildings, malls, schools, and even some houses that you can see those big and grand ones. There are two basic types of elevators. First is hydraulic and the second is traction. The former, which is the hydraulic, uses fluid-driven hydraulic jack in lifting elevator cars. Unlike the latter, which doesn't use overhead hoisting machinery. Also, compared to traction elevators, hydraulic systems are said to be more affordable to install, less expensive to maintain and repair, better for transporting heavy loads, and intended for low-rise applications. The basic components of a hydraulic elevator are the hydraulic jack, the cylinder and plunger, the pump, control valve, and the fluid reservoir, which is the tank. Of course, with that being said, it is implied that each of these have roles to play, knowing the fact that a simple malfunction may lead to grave threats. Every component must be in top-notch condition in order for the elevator to function both excellently and safely. There are four types of hydraulic elevators, but for now, let's start with the first two. First, it is the conventional or hold hydraulic elevator. Here, it is an in-ground hydraulic jack lifts the elevator car. So a long plunger requires a deep hole below the bottom landing. The hole is usually drilled into the ground and cased with a plastic or a metal casing before the building is erected. So it is actually um, depends if you're going to use the plastic or the metal casing. It has its own advantages and disadvantages. But of course, we have to consider that before um, planning these elevators. Also, the most balanced type of hydraulic elevator configuration is the conventional hydraulic elevator. So why? Because the lifting point on the bottom of the elevator car is centered and we're going to discuss later why is it um, said better than other types of hydraulic elevators. 
So second, second is the telescopic hydraulic elevator. A telescopic hydraulic elevator has a telescoping plunger consisting of concentric tubes that slides with one another, allowing a shallow, shallow hole below the lowest floor. Now let's proceed with the third and the fourth. For the last two, there are holeless hydraulic elevator and the rope hydraulic elevator. Holeless hydraulic elevator, the holeless one, it have one or two jacks situated beside the rails that lift the platform. Because they do not require holes to be dug for the hydraulic jacks, they are referred to as holeless. The dual or twin jack configuration can have um two in which um, one is front and one is in rear. Entrances, while the single jack configuration can only have one entrance, which is in the front. The rope hydraulic elevator, on the other hand, uses a combination of both ropes and hydraulic power to raise and lower the cars. So they typically consist of a cantilevered car that is lifted by ropes that pass over a shave or a pulley fastened to the top of a hydraulic plunger. And as the plunger rises, so does the elevator car. However, simple rope configuration cannot have rear entrances. So for better comparison, um, let's take a look on the picture on the screen in which you can spot similarities and differences between the same types. So although they are somewhat um, similar to appearances, you can definitely see that there are varying or different parts in which others have and others don't. So this is a better opportunity to somewhat um, create that image in your mind wherein you can see the advantages and disadvantages of having those or locking those. So moving on, let's talk about the traction elevators. So traction elevator, it have a drive machine with an electric motor and pulley-like or groove drive shift that holds cables that move the elevator car up or down. It uses a counterweight to offset the weight of the cab and occupants. Though compared to hydraulic systems, the traction elevators uses less energy and serve mid to high rise buildings and also the rides here are smoother. So if you've been to um different elevators you can really notice the difference if the ride is smoother or not, especially um if it is on um, different types. So it depends, just like what I have said, the differences or the similarities between the different types of elevators actually have its own advantages or disadvantages. But rest assured that these are safe as well, of course, um, without the malfunctions. Because I have said, the parts must function properly and coherently with one another. Traction elevators are the most common types of elevator. They can be geared or gearless and both types are driven by alternating current AC or direct current DC electrical motors. So here we're going to witness the differences and similarities between the geared elevator and the gearless elevator under the traction elevator. So first, the geared elevators, here there is a gearbox attached to the motor that drives the wheel and moves the ropes. Geared machines can reach speeds up to 500 feet per minute. These models will have a middle-of-the-road cost in terms of initial investment, maintenance cost, and energy consumption. Meanwhile, in gearless elevators, the shift is attached directly to the end of the motor. These models have a high initial cost investment and average maintenance cost. However, gearless traction elevators are more energy efficient than geared traction elevators. So, it depends on the engineer or the planner 
which one are they going to use. It really depends on the circumstances, the budget, the building, the plan, and everything that's involved. Again, here's something I wanted to share with you for better understanding on the types and design speed for elevators. Of course, it varies depending on the type itself as well, as on some technicalities involved, just like what I have mentioned earlier. So the types here, under the types are the hydraulic and the traction geared and the traction gearless. We divided the traction elevator into two since traction elevators have two types, the geared and gearless. So hydraulic elevators or hydraulic type elevators are usually used in a residential buildings with six floors or less. The gear traction are for 18 floors or less. And the traction, the gearless one, is used for over 18 floors. So in this part, you can definitely see the big difference between them. As I have said earlier, it depends on the building. And here, if there are six floors, if there are less floors, you are usually um, prompt to up in using hydraulic elevators. While if there are more floors, then switch to traction elevators. And then you're going to pick between the two if you're going to rely on geared one or gearless. So in commercial building, it is just like the same principle as the first one. If you're going with the less floors, go to a uh, pick hydraulic. But then if you have more floors, then pick traction, geared, or gearless, depending again on the number of floors. If it is like around 18 floors or less, then go for geared. Then if, if it is above more than that, then go for the gearless elevators. Now in speed, you have low for hydraulic, moderate for traction geared, and then high for traction gearless. So as you can see, it is a common thinking that when traveling from fewer floors, it is not required to have such um, high speed or moderate speed since it's just um, less floors compared to the other. For residential, you only have six floors or below, and for commercial, six or less to three or less. So you don't need to put that much risk and effort into having a high speed elevator into a less less floor building. That's why the speed of the traction geared and especially the traction gearless is much of uh, way uncomparable to those in hydraulic elevators. Here we have the table for the feet per minute and the meter per minute. And you can see the differences between them depending on the number of floors, as I have said. Now, let's move on to the basic components of an elevator system. So, there are numerous. Let's just um, tackle them one by one. First is the car. It is also called the cage. It is the load carrying unit, including the frame, the enclosure, and the car door. Next is the platform. It is a flat, relatively horizontal flame framework to which a car is mounted and on which passengers stand or the load is placed. So this is where we stand in the elevator. It is called the platform. And like the enclosure of the elevator itself is called the car. Next is the cab. It is a decorative room in which occupants ride in a passenger elevator. Next is a hoistway. It is a shaft in which the elevator travels. Pit is the space at the bottom of the hoistway under the car. And penthouse is the space 
just on the top of the elevator houseway and the underside of the roof. Next is called the landing. It is the portion of the floor, balcony, or platform used to receive and discharge passenger or freight. Hoistway doors. It is the landings provide an opening in the hoistway to allow passengers or freight to access the elevator car at a landing. These doors remain closed when the elevator car is not present at the landing, which ensures occupant safety and maintains the fire enclosure. Next is the blind hoistway. It has no hoistway door openings or landings on the lower part of a hoistway. Next is the drive unit. It is an assembly of an electric motor, brake, and power transmission or hydraulic system that supplies the power bags for movement of a car. Buffer, an energy absorber located at the bottom of the hoistway to soften the force with which a car runs into the pit during an emergency. It can be large springs or an oil dampener spring combination. So again, it depends on the use, on the building, on the plan, on the elevator. There are certain factors that need to be considered first before choosing um, between the choices that you have, especially in an elevator that carries lives and important loads. So next is the car operating station. It is a panel mounted in the car that contains the car operating controls, call register buttons, um, the door open and close, alarm emergency stop, and many more. Halt station. It is a control panel located outside the elevator doorway in the corridor that houses the call button. Traveling cable. It is a set of electric conductors that provide an electrical connection between the car and outlet in the hoistway or machine room. Elevator controller. It is a microprocessor-based system that directs starting, acceleration, deceleration, and stopping of the elevator cab. So, I personally think that it. This is although these are all important, but I personally have my sight on this one, since it controls the acceleration, the acceleration, and stopping of the elevator cab in in case of an emergency. Next is brake. It is a spring-loaded clamping mechanism that works to prevent car movement when it's at rest or when no power is supplied to the hoist motor. Governor. It is a speed monitoring device on traction elevators that triggers the safety when the elevator moves too quickly. It is also a device for um, safety as well. Then, also we have door interlocks it prevents the operation of the elevator unless the hoistway door is locked in the closed position and also prevents the opening of the hoistway doors from the landing side unless the elevator is in the landing zone and either stop or coming to a stop we also have the emergency power emergency exit and the emergency stop switch the emergency power allows cars to return to a predetermined landing in the event of a power failure. These systems typically operate on generator power. The emergency exit, however, is a removable panel. It is removable only from the top of the car. So the emergency exit permits passenger to be evacu evacuated from the elevator during an emergency. And lastly, the emergency stop switch. It is a hand-operated switch in the car push-button station that when thrown to the off position, it stops the elevator and prohibits its running. So there are classification of elevators. So we have the passenger elevator the freight elevator, the dump waiter, and also the man lifts. So again, there are differences, similarities, advantages, and disadvantages that we cannot freely 
um, eliminate from choosing from these choices. But then we have to because we have to be carefully on which type of elevator is suited for the building. So, passenger elevator is for people and small packages. Freight elevator is for the materials, goods, equipments, and vehicles rather than people. Then, the dumb whaler, it is a small freight elevator. So, it's just similar to freight elevator but smaller in scale. And, is used in transporting um, food, laundry, and many other small items then lastly is the man lifts it is usually for those um small structures or other private buildings providing transport for those authorized personals only then after that we have walkways and ramps so there are moving walkways and moving ramps as you can see here in these pictures the moving walkways it is a power driven continuous low moving conveyor belt that transports people horizontally they are also called moving sidewalk moving pavement vocalator and travelator then next is the moving ramps an inclined moving walkway also called a moving ramp or a power ramp it is a moving walkway that transports people on an inclined up to 12 angle of inclination. There are two types of walkway tech. So first is the pallet type and the second is the moving belt type. The former, which is the pallet type, it is a continuous or series of flat metal plates called pallet that are joined together to form a walkway so usually there is a metal or a rubber surface then the next one is the moving belt walkways it is comprised of a mesh metal or rubber belt with a rubber walking surface that move over metal rollers once on the walkway riders can stand or walk some riders complain that the rollers below the belt tend to cause a bouncy feel Here we can see a table that shows the capacities and design strategies for moving walks and moving ramps. So again, these are the similarities and differences that you can see and can compare between both. So we have the differences in capacity persons or it depends if you are going to measure the limit with one person or two person or three person so you can just look here in the table to see if there are any similarities that may have catch your attention between them because i have said again over and over and over again there are certain factors that need to be taken care of first and planned ahead of time before choosing between the two because you do not want to risk the safety of the people the passengers the load or anything that may have gone through the walkways or ramps same as the elevators of course so here are the different uses of walkways and ramps you can even see most of them just in front of what I'm going to tackle about because it is usually can be seen at the entrances or in the exits. First is the airports in which moving walkways are commonly used in larger airports, airports such as passengers. Often with heavy luggage in tow, typically need to walk considerable distances so if anyone of you have been to airports you can usually notice the moving walkways in there especially for those um, passengers that have um, very large or big heavy packages with them with those people with certain kinds of disabilities as well and you can also see some of these 
in museum exhibits and zoo wherein moving walkways are used to ensure that a museum exhibit is viewed in a certain sequence to provide a particular aesthetic effect and to make sure the crowd moves through at reliable paces. So next is a public transport. Public transport moving walkways are useful for remote platforms in underground subway or metro stations or assisting with lengthier connections between lines. Next is for skiing. So skiing moving walkways known as magic carpets are also used in ski resorts. Skiers can place their skis on the walkway which is designed to provide a strong level of grip. So since the walkways cannot be too steep and are slow compared to other aerial lifts, they are used specially for beginners or to transport people over a short uphill distance such as to read a restaurant or another slave station. And that's pretty much the cover of my topic. You can now move on to the next reporters for more elaboration and new lessons. Thank you and have a nice day. Keep safe. Good day everyone. I'm Michael Panahon from BSCE 2H. Bright elevator. Used to carry material, goods, equipments, ban vehicles rather than people. Meaning na ang bright elevator ay ginawa lamang para mag-carry ng goods at ng hindi passenger. At ito ay designed para mag-move ng mga materials within a building. Typically capable of carrying heavier loads than passenger elevator. Generally from 5,000 pounds or 2,300 to 4,500 kilogram but can be up to 13 tons or 26,000 pounds or 11,700 kilogram capacity. Meaning na mas mabigat yung loads na kinakarry ng freight elevator kesa sa passenger elevator. Kaya mas mabagal mag-travel yung freight elevator kesa sa passenger elevator. May have manually operated doors and often start the interior finishes to prevent damage during loading and unloading. May mga bright elevator kasi na hindi manually yung doors. At sabi na start the interior. Interior. Meaning na or strongly built yung freight elevator dahil mabibigat yung loads nilalagay sa kanya at if magkaroon ng transport ng goods ay ma-avoid o ma-prevent yung damage during that operation. Damp waiter. It is a small freight elevator used to transport lightweight such as food, laundry, books, records, and other small items. Ang dumb waiter is similar na ng purpose dun sa bright elevator. But ito ay mas maliit. At mas mali, mas magaan yung mga loads na pwede mo ilagay sa dumb waiter. Passenger are not permitted on dumb waiters. True, true naman dahil maliit lang yung dumb waiter. At ito ay para lamang sa mga goods at hindi para sa passenger. Dump waiter are generally driven by a small electric motor with counterweight or maybe hand operated during row pulley. May, yung mga luma kasing, um, may mga luma kasing dump waiter ay inooperate lang talaga ng pulley. Roof and pulley operation. Pero ngayon kasi, syempre na-upgrade. Na-upgrade dyan at nagkaroon ng electric motor with counterweight. Ang counterweight is yung pagkakaroon ng opposite force para sa balance and stability. Kapag may balance and stability, mas mabilis yung load faster at mas effective. At kapag mas mabilis naman yung, yung pagtatransport ng goods, ay mas makakasave ka ng energy at tax sa gastos. Generally, Limited to a capacity about of 750 pounds or 340 kilograms. Di ba mas magaan siya kaysa sa um, freight elevator at passenger elevator. At ang dumb waiter pala is 
ginagamit especially sa mga matataas na buildings at yung mga buildings na nag offer ng services. Like hotel, dahil doon ay pwede mag-transport ng goods and foods from floor to floor. And they can be accessed by a small panel on the wall like passenger elevator pero mas maliit na version. Yung waiter ay ininvent ni George W. Cannon in 1883. Although simple rope and pulley design ay na-upgrade, ay na-upgrade na pero may mga gumagamit pa din ngayon nun rope and pulley design. Yan, ang dumb waiter. Merong type ng dalawa ng dumb waiter, merong floor loading and may counter loading. Simple lang na may pinagkaiba nila. Kapag floor loading, ibig sabihin is yung load na meron sa iyo ay yung mga nakakart or nasa floor level. 'Yan. At yung counter loading naman, issue kaya na mabuhati ng mga kamay gaya na ng pagkain, ng laundry, mga books, mga records. Yun. Man lifts. An elevator installed in a variety of structures and locations to provide vertical transportation of authorized personnel and their tools and equipment. Ang man lifts talaga is, is especially specialized aerial work platform na safe, that is used to safely lift a worker with their equipments outdoor or maybe indoor. Ito ay ginagamit typically installed in structures such as green elevators, radio antenna, antennas, and bridge towers, underground facilities, dams, power plants, and similar structures. It is available in 300 pounds or 140 kilogram, 500 pounds or 230 kilogram, 650 pounds or 300 kilogram and 1000 pounds or 467 kilogram capacities. At meron types na man lifts. Meron tayong sa propelled man lifts. Meron tayong Meron tayong push around man lifts at meron din tayo atrium man lift. First natin i-determine is kung ano nga ba yung self-propelled man lift. Yung self-propelled man lift, eh, yun yung pinakamaliit dun sa tatlong man lift na yun. Ito ay, nare-reach ni lamang is yung 15 to 20 feet. At ito ay best para sa mga indoor projects. Like yung small-scale construction, yung ceiling repair, warehouse, wall work. Yan, sa mga wall works, yung mga wallpapers, pagkakabit ng wallpapers. And... Next is yung push around man dip. Yung push around man dip naman is na slightly larger lang siya sa self-propelled. At yung nare-reach niyang height is 15 to 50 feet. Ito ay ginagamit dun sa small and medium construction. Pwede din to sa ceiling repair, sa wall work din, at yung sa photography, yung mga bird shots, sa mga boobies, ganun. Atrium belt. Ang atrium belt is meron siyang compact crawler lips. Unlike mo sa unang sa unang unang dalawang nabanggit. Ito yung pinakamalaki sa kanilang tatlo at ito yung may pinaka mabigat na heavy may pinaka mabigat na capacity para sa isang worker. It is Generally used outdoor projects. At ito ay nare-reach niya is 34 feet. Pero narorotate siya 360 degrees. Meron itong jib, jib joint na para mas madali na maneuver yung mga obs- ma- maneuver dun sa mga trees sa mga power lines. Ito ay pwede rin siyang battery powered at meron din naman mga ginagamitan ng gasoline or diesel or maybe fuel. Next is yung elevator design criteria. Because of the accessibility regulation, passenger elevators are often 
a building code required in the new buildings with multiple floors. Yan. Di ba? Sa mga buildings kasi is nagkaka nagkakaroon ng survey kung ilan yung mga tao na meron dun sa isang building. Siyempre, mas, pag mas maraming tao, mas ma ano yung required na size, sizes, yung mga gamit, mga equipments na gagamitin sa pagbuo ng isang elevator. Kaya nagkaroon ng building code requirement para sa mga buildings na mas, na mas maraming floors. Model building rules require compliance with the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Standard for Installation, Maintenance, Inspection of Elevators. At yung American Society of Mechanical Engineers ay sila yung mas nakakaalam. Yung mga tao na bilong dun sa sa society na yon is yung yun yung mas nakakaalam para sa mga proper code sa mga etiquette na kakailanganin sa pag-build ng isang elevator. High-rise building required a set of elevators. Selecting the technology to be used in new elevator installation depends on many, of many parameters. Parameters is yung um, siguro kung ilan yung makakasakay dun sa loob na elevator. Yun. Siyempre, pag mga high-rise buildings, kailangan talaga ng elevators. At hindi lang naman isa, pwede rin na dalawa, tatlo, depende sa laki ng building. Traction elevator, motor size and power consumption is significant, significantly lower than hydraulic elevators. Traction elevators are much quicker than hydraulic elevators. Hydraulic elevators have lower installation costs. Installing hydraulic jacks become impractical for, for tall hole, hoist waste because of the height limitation of the plunger, so these elevators become more costly beyond 60 feet or 20 meter. Thus, hydraulic elevators are quite common in low and medium rise buildings or 2 to 5 stories per high rise building 775 feet or 25 meter traction elevators must be used. Bibigyan natin ng mm, bibigyan natin ng differences ang traction elevators at hydraulic elevations. Sabi sa traction elevators, yung cab is raised and lowered by traction steels or belts on a pulley system. Samantalang yung hydraulics naman sa hydraulic elevators, hindi ito gumagamit ng overhead hoisting machineries. Pero, ang ginagamit nito is fluid drive and piston that is mounted mounted with the cylinder. Gumagamit ang traction ng counterweight along with the weight of cabs and occupants o yung mga taong sumasakay. Pero mas less expensive ang hydraulic elevators kesa sa traction pero mas energy efficient ang traction. Ang traction ay pwede siyang gear or gearless. Samantalang naman yung hydraulic elevators ay pwede hold or holdless. Design criteria differ depending on the building type, hotel, apartment, and office. Siyempre, nakadepende talaga sa building type. Yung may mga hotel na matataas, mga sky skyscrapers, yung apartment, at yung mga offices. Iba-iba siya ng, ng design criteria ng elevators. Kasi mas Iba-iba yung mga sizes nila, yung mga taas. Sabi is office buildings, one elevator group and generally serves of all floors in buildings up to 15 to 20 floors depending on the building population. Gaya na sabi ko kanina, nakadepende ang paggagawa ng elevator dun sa taas ng building at sa population o kung ilan yung mga nagtatrabaho doon sa building na yun. When there are more than 20 floors, single grouping is not efficient, will normally result in a long travel times and congression in elevators, lobbies during peak periods. Kapag masyado mataas na, o mas mara, masyado na maraming floors yung isang building, hindi na nga naman pwede yung single group na elevator. Di ba may mga, ele, may mga buildings na dalawa yung elevator para mas mabilis na travel times. Kasi syempre pag isa lang yung gamit na elevator, yung iba ay Pinipili na lang na bag stairs para mas mapabilis. 
the passenger elevators per building with more than 20 floors up to about 35 floors should be separated into low-rise and local service and high-rise or express service. Elevators in the low-rise low group should serve a lower portion of the buildings, while the elevators in, in high-rise group travel directly from the main stop to the upper portion of the building. Yan. Elevator code standards. Codes are established by American National Standard Safety Code per elevator, dump waiters, escalators, and moving walks, and local building codes. Standard size and sheets per elevators are determined by the National Elevator Industries Incorporation. The elevator code standard is, syempre, para lang to sa safety ng mga tao na gagamit ng mga elevator. So, babasahin lang natin yung code niya. The standard code for elevators and escalators in American Society for Mechanical Engineers Safety Code for Elevators and Escalators covers main design, construction, operation, inspection, testing, maintenance, alteration, and repair of the equipment and any associated parts such as hoist, ways, and adjacent spaces. The document applies specifically to hoisting and lowering mechanism equipped with a car that moves between two or more landings or elevator, power driving stairways and walkways for carrying between carrying persons between landings or escalators for moving walks, and hoisting and lowering mechanism equipped with a car that serves two or more landing and is, and is restricted to the carrying of material by its limited size or limited access to the car, or these are the dumb waiters and material lifts. In ASME, the key concern is safety and by working to assure that the efficient of elevators or lifts and routing them with rigid recommendations. The daily passengers of the elevator cars remain safe. The majority of these efforts are present in the elevator's construction. These include design considerations such as using the correct materials, allocating for a bit allowable stresses, a means of suspensions for cars, and counterweights and braking mechanisms, just to name a few. As per escalators and moving walks, the design specifications are written with the name of safety interest, but they, of course, are catered to the relevant equipment. For example, the guidance for escalators call for many important design characteristics in the balustrades such as materials, glass, or plastic, strength, and geometry. So, gaya na sabi ko kanina, ang standard, ang standard elevator code standard ay para lamang sa safety or kung ano yung mga appropriate na mga equipments at mga materials na allowable para mas para mag um, ma strongly built yung mga elevators such as yung mga moving walks, yung escalators, elevators, yung manlip sa mga ba, mga dumb waiters dahil hindi sila magkakamukha, magkakamukha ng karakteristik kung paano sila i-build. Pero may, nagkakaiba-iba sila sa, sa loadings, nagkakaiba-iba sila sa, sa sizes, at nagkakaiba-iba sila ng purpose. Yung iba may cars, yung iba may, um, gumagamit ng counterweights, yun. Next is yung recommended capacity and design for passenger elevators in various occupations. Yan, nandyan yung building types, kung ano yung capacity niya, yung size, I should design rules of thumb. Ayan, nakikita natin yung office buildings, ay meron siya capacity na 3,500 pounds, at ang dapat na width niya is 8 feet or 8, in 8 inches or 5 feet and 5 inches. One elevator per 4,500 usable feet squared. Number of in a single group should not exceed 8. 
No single group should serve more than 16 levels. A separate service elevator should be considered above four, four floors. Additional elevators per cafeteria, central supplies, and so on. Per apartment buildings, the capacity is 2,500 pounds. Its size in width is 6 feet and 8 inches and size in depth is 4 feet 3 inches. One elevator for every 60 to 75 rooms. Do not exceed 150 feet from the farthest room. One service elevators to move furniture. For the hotels, motels, and dorms, ang capacity pounds is 3,500 pounds. And in size in width is 6 feet and 8 inches. At yung size in depth is 5 feet and 5 inches. Sa service, sa mga service buildings, the capacity pounds is 4,500. Size in width is 4 feet, 4 inches, at yung size in depth is 8, in, 8 feet and 5 inches. It is requires vary by the facility. Next is type and design speeds for elevators. Ito naman yung uh, bilis. So, type. For hydraulic elevators for residential, Residential purposes is 6 floors or less. Commercial three, For commercial is 3 floors or less or 6 floors or less than. For commercial, ang speed niya is low. At nag-travel siya na 100 feet per minute. Eh, 100 feet per minute. At yung isa naman, for the commercial is 30 minutes. 30 meter per minute and 45 minute per minute. Next tayo is type and design speed for elevators. Ayan yung mga types ng elevators natin. And for the hydraulic elevators for residential, 6 floors or less. And for the commercial, is 3 floors or less or 6 floors or less. Yung speed niya is low lang. At for the residential, 100 feet per minute or maybe 100 feet per minute. And for the commercial, 30 minute per 30 meters per minute and or 45 meters per minute. The traction geared. Nabagit ko kanina na yung traction elevators it's maybe geared or gearless. So, traction geared for the, for the residential 18 floors or less. At sa commercial naman is 5 floors or less, maybe 9 floors or less, 18 floors or less. Ang speed niya is moderate. At nagtatravel niya at speed of 200 feet per minute, or maybe 300 feet per minute, 900 feet per minute. And for the commercial, 60, 60 meters per minute, 105 meters per minute, and 135 meters per minute. Traction or traction gearless, ito naman yung gearless na traction elevator. Over 18 floors. And for the commercial, over 18 floors per residential and for, for the commercial, 15 floors or less, 15 to 25 floors, above 25 floors. High for the speed. And, and residential can travel 500 feet per minute, maybe 700 feet per minute, 1,000 feet per minute. And for the commercial, 150 meters per minute, 210 meters per minute, 30 meters per minute above 75 stories or floors the speed is very high it can travel 350 feet per minute or 1080 meters per minute next is the the recommended performance of elevators building type na elevators at din niyo average waiting interval and percentage of total population handled over peak or 5 minute period. Sa type ng building, office buildings, the average wait interval is 25 to 30 seconds. At yung percentage for the total population handled over peak is 12 to 15 percent. And for the apartment buildings, the average waiting interval is 50 to 80 seconds. And the percentage of total population handled over peak is 5 to 8 percent. Dormitories. 
Average waiting interval is 50 to 17 seconds and the percentage of the total population, population handled over peak is 10 to 15 percent. And for the hotels, average waiting intervals is 40 to 70 seconds and percentage of total population handled over peak is 10 to 15 percent. Next, an example of elevator loading capacity for passengers and freight elevators. Yan, rated loads per pounds. Mapasin nyo yan, iba't iba yung pounds, iba-iba din yung capacity ng numbers ng passengers. At iba-iba din yung inside net platform area for Square. Elevators in a skyscraper are separated low-rise or local service elevators are high and high-rise or express service elevators. Elevators in a low-rise group should serve the lower portion of the building while the high-rise group travel directly from the main stop to the upper portion of building. Express elevators. Then there's local elevators. Kadalasan ang mga express service elevators is mas mahaba yung travel distance niya kaysa sa kaysa dun sa low rise or local service elevators. Good day. Uh, my name is Arnella Takador from BSC2H and I am here to explain the, the variation of basic types of elevators. Now, let's proceed. Variation of basic types of elevators. The conventional hold hydraulic elevators, traction elevator, holeless hydraulic elevator, rope hydraulic elevator. Um, one. Conventional hold hydraulic elevator. On a conventional hold hydraulic elevator, an in-ground hydraulic jack lifts the elevator car. A long plunger requires a deep hole below the bottom landing. The hole is usually drilled into the ground and cased with plastic or metal casing before the building is erected. Conventional hold hydraulic elevators are the most balanced type of hydraulic elevator configuration because the lifting point on the bottom of the elevator car is centered. Kung makikita natin, yung car niya ay para siyang nakatusok, tapos itataas lang siya, para siyang binubuhat lang ng hydraulic hold elevator. Sabi dyan, naka, ano daw siya, naka, nakabaon sa lupa, tapos bababa lang siya, at saka tataas. Next, traction elevators. Traction elevators have drive machine with the electric motor and pulley-like groove, drive, shift, and holds cables that, more, that move the elevator car up or down. Kung makikita naman natin dun sa traction elevator, para siyang may pulley na may pabigat. Yung nasa taas yung kanyang ano, yung holder para itataas siya, then bababa. Parang sa, sa pulley nga. At eh, yung yung isa, yung isang yung may hydraulic makikita natin sa baba. Ito naman nasa taas yung holder niya. Next. Holeless hydraulic elevators. Holeless hydraulic elevators have one or two jacks situ situate situated beside the rails that lifts the platform because they do not require holes to be dug for the hydraulic jacks. They are referred to as holeless. The dual or twin jack configuration can have two front and rear entrances, while the single jack configuration can only have one front entrance. Kung makita naman natin dito sa holeless hydraulic elevator, nasa gilid siya. 
para siyang hydraulic kaso nasa gilid niya lang kaysa doon sa nauna nasa ilalim siya nung nung car ay pero eto nasa gilid nakakabit siya doon sa gilid next rope hydraulic elevator rope hydraulic elevators use a combination of both rope and hydraulic power to raise the lower cars they typically consist of cantilevered car that is lifted by ropes that pass over a sheave pulley fastened to the top of a hydraulic plunger. As a plunger rises, so does the elevator car. Single rope configuration cannot have rear entrances. Ito naman, para siyang pinaghalong pinaghalong hydraulic tsaka yung traction na isa. Ayan. Kung makita natin, meron din siyang pulley. Next, classification of elevators. Passenger elevators. Passenger elevators are designed to carry people and small packages. Yung passenger elevators, um, ginawa siya para mag-carry ng mga tao at saka maliliit na package. Next, free elevators. Free elevators are used to carry material goods, equipment, and vehicle rather than people. Um, mas malaki naman siguro yung free elevators kesa doon sa passenger elevators. Kasi ini, um, hindi tao eh. Baka mga sabi dyan, vehicle at saka mga equipment. Next, dump waiters. A dump waiter is a small free elevator used to transport lightweight free such as food, laundry, books, records, and other small items. Man lifts. A man lifts is an elevator installed in a variety of structures and location to provide vertical transportation of authorized personnel and their tools, equipment only. Next, passenger elevators. Pa passenger elevator designed to carry people and small packages. Kasi sabi nga lang, um, tao yung, yung ano, passenger nga eh. Tsaka small packages lang. Typically, have capacities from 150 to 500 pounds, 680 to 2,300 kilograms yung kaya niyang i-carry, 50 LB or 230 increments. Um, passenger elevators are operated by the passenger and have extractive inferior finishes. It's also used to move free. Passenger elevator, standard dimensions and reaction of, reactions of passenger elevators. Um, yan. Kung makita natin, makita natin dito yung person, kung ilan sila, tapos yung pounds na hanggang kaya niya, at saka yung speed na kaya niyang ibigay, yung luwang niya, at saka yung international dimension, ayan, makikita natin dyan, yung standard dimension reaction of passenger elevators. Kaya yun lang. Maraming salamat. Thank you and goodbye. Escalator by Eliana Marie A. Santos So, an escalator is a power-driven, continuously moving stairway system used for transporting people. They can move in a linear or spiral or curved manner. So, this is the linear type and this is the spiral type. So, possible na ganyan ang movement ng escalator or yung design. Mostly, kapag spiral type escalator, yung ginawa dun sa isang building is because of the design of a structure. Analysis typically shows that 15 to 20 elevators are needed to move the occupant capacity of an escalator. So, here are the various types of escalators. We have the commercial escalator, which is yung capacity is from 4,500 to 9,000 persons per hour. Next is slimline escalator. Same as in the commercial escalator, the capacity of this escalator range from 4,500 to 9,000 persons per hour. Heavy duty escalator. Same as to the recent types of escalators. And lastly, multi-level escalator. So we can observe the kahit ano pang type ng escalator yan, the capacity are, are all the same. Escalators can be placed in the same physical space as stairs. They have the capacity to move large numbers of people. In contrast to the elevator, escalators have no waiting interval. 
So, kadalasan nga lalagay ang escalator besides listers like in NSN or Pacific Mall. The advantage of an escalator from elevator is that people doesn't need to wait for their turn to go up or down. Escalators are typically used in department stores, shopping malls, sporting arenas, stadiums, airports, convention centers, hotels, subways, office complexes, and public buildings. Also, here are the factors that affect escalator design, including physical requirements, the vertical and the horizontal distance to be spun, the location, traffic patterns, safety considerations, and aesthetic preferences. Standard dimensions and design capacities of escalators. We can see in Table 24.6, the basic design capacities of escalators are stated. So we have small to large size. In small, the capacity is only one passenger, while in medium size, one passenger with one package or one piece of luggage, and large size can carry two passengers. So in Table 24.7 is the various types of escalators. We can see the spiral and linear design. So this one is the crisscross type escalator. Basic components of an escalator system. Although expensive and large escalators are basic machines, in this figure, escalator components are shown. Escalator drive unit is a machine that drives the escalator. It is compromised of an electric motor, the accelerator, electromagnetic brake, V-belt, sprocket, and other components. It is powered by constant speed AC electric motor. Like sa single na motor, may driver, di ba? Siya yung nag start ng motor para umandar ito. Ganun lang din ang purpose nitong drive unit. Siya yung dahilan bakit tuloy-tuloy na umaandar yung buong escalator. Sprocket drive is compromise of wheels installed at top and bottom each end to drive the steps or pallets. The top sprocket drives the moving steps while the bottom sprocket turns the steps. So ito yung asa top, yung malaking bilog na yon para mabalance yung steps and dire-diretso yung flow ng mga steps. The moving steps, while the bottom sprocket turns the steps, the steps or pallets are made from one piece, die cast aluminum or steel. They serve as the moving platform on which an escalator passenger rides. So, ito yung kung saan tayo nakatayo kapag as escalator tayo or yung pinaka platform niya. The ballast tread is the side of an escalator system. It extends above the steps and includes skirt panels, interior panels, decks, and handrails. So, ito yung mismo yung glass niya. Yun yung ballast tread. A moving handrail provides a handhold that riders use for balance and safety on their ride up or down. The handrail is powered by the same system that powers the steps. It moves along the top of the ballast tread in synchronization with the steps. So, ito yung handrail yung hinahawakan natin kapag ka, nakasakay tayo ng escalator. Truss is an assembly of structural steel that serves to support the escalator load. Ends of the truss are attached to top and bottom landing platforms. So, siya yung, pinag, yung pinaka nagsusupport sa entire escalator. Good day everyone! I am Jabriana J. Enriquez from BSCE 2H and I will be discussing the continuation of the basic components of an escalator system and the escalator arrangements. Basic components of an escalator system Escalators are powered by constant speed alternating current motors and are designed to move at approximately 1 to 2 feet or 0.3 to 0.6 meter per second. The maximum angle of inclination of an escalator measured from the horizontal floor level is typically 30 degrees. A standard total rise for a commercial escalator can be up to about 60 feet or 18 meters. We have here the table 24.6 which is the basic design capacities of escalators. A small size escalator can carry a single passenger per step 
and it is commonly installed in low volume use uppermost levels of department stores when space is limited. A medium sized escalator can carry a one passenger and one package or one piece of luggage and it is commonly installed in shopping malls, department stores, and smaller airports. A large size escalator can carry two passengers per step and it is commonly installed in metro transit systems, larger airports, train stations, large retail use. Next, we have here table 24.7 which is the standard dimension and design capacities of escalators. There are four types of escalators, the commercial, slimline, heavy duty, and multi-level escalators. Their corresponding capacity, step width, speed, angle of inclination, and horizontal steps are stated, and we will be attaching these tables on our soft copy. Next is the escalator arrangement. A single continuous arrangement is a set of up-only escalators that zigzag back and forth as they move floor to floor. A passenger traveling multiple floors gets off one escalator, takes a few steps, and gets on the next escalator to travel to the next upper floor. Next is the single crisscross escalator or crossing escalators. The crossing escalator is most effective when servicing building programs that require fast travel between levels such as moving employees in large department stores. A single non-continuous arrangement is a set of interrupted escalators all traveling up from floor to floor. It has no downward travel. It requires a passenger traveling multiple floors to get off, walk a distance to the other side of the escalator system to get on the next escalator before traveling to the next upper floor. The fourth one is the parallel or paired continuous escalator. Paired continuous escalator systems combine two sets of single continuous escalator side by side. Though inefficient in space planning, this system creates a consolidated and functional destination within a floor plan that allows direct access to multiple floors. Paired discontinuous escalators are stacked parallel banks of escalators that connect levels in both directions. This is similar to single discontinuous escalators but with a second adjacent escalator traveling in the opposite direction. This strategy is not efficient for people looking to travel quickly between levels as the circulation requires the user to travel to the opposite landing to continue moving vertically. For additional information, there is an emergency stop switch that extends from the right handrail. However, it is only used with the permission of the ABC. That's all for my report. Thank you for listening. Hi everyone! I am Angel Lubi Cabrera ng BSCE2H at ngayon naman ay pag-aralan natin yung walkways and ramps. So pag sinabi natin moving walkways, is a power driving, continuous slow moving conveyor belt na kung saan tinatransport niya yung mga tao horizontally. So tinatawag din siyang moving sidewalk, moving pavement, walkator, and travelator. Sumunod naman doon is yung inclined moving walkways. So yung inclined moving walkways ay tinatawag din siyang moving ramp or power ramp. So katulad lang ng moving walkway, tinatransport niya yung people pero ang kinaba kinaibahan nga lang is naka-inclined siya and yung inclination niya is up to 12 degree angle. So mayroong two types ng walkway technology. Una na dito is yung pallet type walkway. So, yung pallet type walkway is a continu continuous series of flat metal plates called pallet na kung saan pinagsama-sama siya together para makabuo ng walkway. So, kadalasan, meron ditong metals or rubber surface na tinatawag din extra traction. So, sunod naman doon is yung moving belt walkway system. So, yung moving belt 
walkway system are compromise of mesh metal over metal rollers. So, kapag nandito ka naman sa walkway na to, yung mga riders, pwede siyang tumayo or lumakad. So, kadalas, pero kadalasan, yung mga riders is nagko-complain sila dahil nga yung roller below the belt is minsan nagko-cause ng bouncy feel. So, yung moving walkway is accessible siya para doon sa mga naka-wheelchair kesa doon sa paglabas tsaka sa pagpasok sa elevator. So, yung mga walkway are typically ini-install siya by pair na kung saan magkaiba yung direction. And, nag-ooperate siya at 90 to 100 feet per minute or 27 to 37 meter per minute at yung haba niya is umaabot ng 500 feet or less than 100 feet. 50 meter long. So, sumunod naman doon is pag-usapan naman natin yung ramps. Yung yung sinasabi ditong ramps are slow pathway used both inside and outside building used to provide access between vertical levels. So, yung mga ramps is nagpo-provide siya ng mga alternative stairs para sa mga wheelchair user, people with mobility issue, and people with prams, bicycles, and other wheeled items. So, yun lang yung aking report and thank you. So, hi guys. I'm Kira Arbosalpa. So, yung report ko is other system. So, yung other system ay binubuo siya ng apat na system. Yung una is lips. Pangalawa is people movers. Yung pangatlo is material handling equipment. At yung pangapat is pattern noster. What is lips? So, yung lips is ito yung ginagamit para sa pagdadala ng mga bagay from one place to higher place pero yung lips is karaniwang ginagamit ito ng mga PWD or person with disabilities halimbawa wala nang kakayahang maglakad or uh, maglakad yung isang tao so ginagamit nila ito para umakit sa second floor or higher floor so may iba't ibang types yung lips so yung una is wheelchair lips a wheelchair lips is a device designed to raise a wheelchair and its occupant to overcome a step or similar vertical barrier, usually 6 feet or 1.8 meter or less. So, yung wheelchair lips is ito yung ginagamit ng mga taong naka-wheelchair na may sukat ito na 6 feet, 6 feet or 1.8 meter or less. So, ito yung itsura ng wheelchair lips. So, yung pangalawang type is commercial lips. So, yun yung ito ng commercial lips. Commercial lips are designed to raise a wheelchair or a scooter and its occupant up to one story. About 12 feet per 4 meter. So, yung commercial lips, ginagamit din ito para sa mga naka-wheelchair o kaya naka-scooter para makakayat in, in a higher place. So, itong commercial lifts, may sukat siya na 12 feet per 4 meter. So, para lang siyang elevator. Platform lifts. A platform lifts is another way of moving people vertically inside buildings, but has found favor in many places as a way of providing access to higher floors for wheelchair users. So, kung makikita nyo sa picture, same lang sila ng commercial lifts. Nagkaiba lang sila ng itsura, pero parehas silang... Um, ginagamit para iyakit yung isang bagay o tao in one place to higher place. Stair lifts. Stair lifts are a battery powered chair mounted to a rail that is used to carry the user up and down stairs. So yung stair lifts is ito yung ginagamit ng mga taong walang kakayahan umakyat at bumaba ng hagdan. So kung yung makikita nyo sa picture is nakalagay siya sa sa rail ng hagdan. Car lips. Car lips is installed in a small parking garage where ramps are not visible. So yung car lips is ginagamit siya para mas maraming mailagay ng mga sasakyan sa isang garahe. So halimbawa, yung isang kotse nakalagay sa isang car lips. So pwede ka pang magparada sa ilalim ng kotse ng ibang sasakyan. So yun yung gamit ng car lips. In addition to the vertical motion, the platform can rotate about its... Uh, Vertical access up to 180 degrees to ease driver access and or accommodate building plans. Capacities and design strategies for moving walks and moving ramps. So yung moving walks para siyang flat escalator nakikita natin sa airport. 
Tapos yung moving ramps naman is ito yung nilalagay sa likod ng truck para mas madaling ibaba yung mga gamit na nakalagay sa likod ng truck. So sa table na ito is nakalagay yung tamang capacities ng moving walks at moving ramps. So meron siyang approximate width, speed, capacity at equipment at inclination angle types of accessibility lifts so dito is meron siyang anim na types yung una is vertical platform lifts inclined platform lifts inclined stairwell chair lifts emergency evacuation device portable wheelchair lifts limited use or limited application elevator people movers an automated people movers or APM is fully automated grade separated mass transit system. An APM system typically serves relatively small facilities such as airports, downtown districts, or theme parks, but is sometimes applied to considerably more complex automated system. So in people movers is binubuo siya ng tatlong types, duo rail, monorail, and automated guideway transit. So ito yung monorail. A railroad in which the track consists of a single rail, typically elevated, with the train suspended from it or balancing on it. So yung monorail is, from word mono, ibig sabihin, one or single rail lang siya. So ito naman yung dual rail. A dual rail integrates two glazed opening vents that, that have an identical look, resulting in an aesthetic sliding door. So yung dual rail is para lang siyang dalawang monorail na may identical look. So ito naman yung Automated Guideway Transit or IGT. The Automated Guideway Transit or IGT is a fully automated driverless transit system in which vehicles are automatically guided along a guideway. So yung IGT or Automated Guideway Transit is driverless siya automatic siyang tumatakbo. Good day everyone! This is Shara Allen P. Dimapilis from BSCE 2H and today I'm here to discuss safety in using building conveying systems. We all know that safety is the utmost priority. And when it comes to it, first, let us talk about something that cannot be avoided. Accidents. Lahat naman siguro tayo ay nakagamit na ng isa or mahigit pang conveying system sa buhay natin, especially sa mall. Madalas tayong nakagamit ng mga elevators and escalators. Pero sabi nga, ang mga aksidente, hindi sila may iwasan kahit gaano ka man kaingat. Kaya yung mga elevators and such, they still pose potential damage and threat to our well-being kapag ginagamit natin. Though ang mga accident sa paggamit ng mga elevator or escalator sa yan common, they are not unheard of. In fact, accidents in using these systems could lead to death. Since the reference I use is from the US, I included here a US statistics about accidents in elevators and escalators. Uh, it will give us an idea on the threat level of these systems. So, according to here, there are 600,000 elevators and 30,000 escalators in the U.S., making an estimated 230 million trips per day. Such big numbers, therefore, the risk of having accidents is also greater. Ang most common na elevator accident ay yung mauhulog sa elevator shop. Yung elevator shop, yun yung area na ginagalaban ng elevator mismo. Doon nagtataas baba yung elevator cabin or car, aka yung sinasakyan natin part na elevator. Nangyayari siya ay pumukas yung pinto ng elevator pero wala doon yung elevator car or cabin. Therefore, pag pumasok ka sa loob, mauhulog ka if hindi mo napansin na wala pala doon or missing pala yung car or cabin ng elevator. Tapos, next naman is, next na common na accident naman is yung naipit doon sa elevator door or of shop. Alam ko, merong sensor usually ang mga elevator, pero of course, this could also malfunction. Now, let's move on to escalators. Uh, I think we are more familiar with these. Meron sa mga mall nito and people at least once in their life nakagamit na sila ng escalator. Sa escalator naman, the most common accidents ay resulta ng mga action na 
na, na mga actions ng mga nakasakay while using this conveying system. Example, yung mga loose clothing na sinusuot natin, like yung sintas ng sapatos, niipit siya dun sa mga crevices ng escalator. Not only that, kahit yung mga, hindi lang, kahit hindi yung sintas ng sapatos, kahit yung sintas ng sapatos mismo, and pati yung mga daliri sa kamay at paa, pwede rin maipit minsan. Pero, hindi naman laging kasalanan nung nakasaka yung nangyayaring aksidente. May mga instances na yung escalator mismo yung nagmamal function. May mga records na bigla lang bumilis or nagbago yung direction ng movement ng mga escalators, resulting to multiple injuries. Uh, according to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, around 6,000 people ang dinadala sa emergency room, emergency room dahil sa, es- sa escalator-related accidents. And 20% sa mga accident na to involve yung kamay, paa, sap- at sapatos. Uh, isa sa pinaka-common na natatrap na footwear is yung Crocs, if familiar ka t- kayo doon. Ito yung nakikita nyo sa picture. Uh, so, in short, although escalators and elevators are generally safe to use, of course, may mga team na nagmemaintain yan. Malfunction- malfunctions can also happen and this will result to injuries and in severe cases, death. Next, let us talk about licensing and why is it important. Uh, in most occasions, importante ang licensing sa pag-operate ng mga conveying systems. So, hindi lang naman elevators at escalators ang mga, conve- ang mga conveying systems na meron. Ito lang yung pinaka-common or yung madalas nating nakikita or nagagamit. Meron din yung mga tinatawag na dumbwaiters. If di kayo familiar, dumbwaiters yung maliit na elevator para sa mga pagkain. Na usually nakikita natin sa mga international movies. At least for me, doon ko sila na- madalas nakikita. Since it's not really common around here. So, sumunod yung stair lips. Nakikita nyo naman sa picture. Ganyan yung itsura niya. Usually, ginagamit siya ng mga matatanda or ng mga, may di- mga di kayang gumamit ng hagdan. So, wheelchair lips para sa mga naka-wheelchair. Ganyan itsura niya. Construction man lips, ginagamit ng mga nagko-construction to reach higher places, and marami pang ibang conveying systems. Pwede kang mag-issue ng license sa mga authorities, either city, country, or state. Pero may mga exceptions doon, gaya na lang ng sabi dito, na exceptions include some types of work on residential systems and some, and some types of electrical work that do not involve working in, under, or on top of the elevator car. In the end, importante na may license to make sure na about base standards yung ginagamit natin na conveying systems. This is to prevent accidents or any mishaps. It all falls to safe ba siyang gamitin and if may license, we could be assured of the quality na the risk of malfunctioning is very little. Dahil na-check and umabot naman sa standards. Still, as I have said, ang mga aksidente ay di may iwasan so... Stay safe and vigilant and that is for and that is that it that is my report.